Well, to rap or not to rap? That's a pretty tough question. Hi, everybody. I'm David Burns, EAS Certified Master Beekeeper. Thank you for watching my beekeeping channel today as we talk about winter and how to get your bees through the winter by wrapping up your hive, whether it's effective or not. And sometimes it can be detrimental. So let's find out more about wrapping up a hive for winter, if we should or if we shouldn't. Before we do, though, let me encourage you to please subscribe to my beekeeping channel. I offer a lot and a lot of good videos for you, especially if you're interested in keeping bees for the very first time. Subscribe, click on the bell. You'll be notified each time I make a new video. Now, before I talk about wrapping a hive, the pros and cons, if you should or if you shouldn't, let's just jump out into the bee yard. I have a hive that I want to put a winter bee kind on and wrap it up. And the one beside it, I'll, I won't do that. So let's go out there and do that now. One of the things I like to do in order to kind of bait my winter bee kinds is I'll just get some honey and put about three little stripes of honey on the winter bee kind. I'm going to get a little closer. You can see it there. And all that's really doing is exciting the bees to get on this a little faster. And... Um, so that's a little trick I use to get my bees onto the winter bee kind a little faster. Okay, so um, here we are outside. And what I'm doing is getting ready to put the winter bee kind on first. So I'll take the top off. And in this case, the bees, fortunately, are pretty low down in the colony, in the hive there. So I don't have to worry about bees coming up quickly. It's a pretty cold day. Looking and noticing that the bees are down there. The winter bee kind, you saw that I put some honey on it to lure the bees onto it. I just simply put it in position and then put the top right back onto it. And you may want to put a brick or something like a concrete block on top uh, to keep the wind from blowing that off. Once you break the propolis seal of your top cover, um, the, the top could blow off. It takes a warm day to heat up the propolis enough to kind of make it sticky again. So be careful about that. Now, there's really uh, no rocket science to putting on the bat insulation. Uh, basically, what I want to do is just get one layer of insulation around, um, you know, 90% of the hive itself. And I use Gorilla Tape. Here in Illinois, we can have a lot of wind that can rip that off if I don't get, you know, a good uh, tape on it. You could use other things if you wanted to tack it on with some wood strips or staples uh, I just feel better putting uh, Gorilla Tape around it. Actually, I've used these um, pieces of insulation for probably a good uh, five or six years. I just keep using them over and over again, and they hold up pretty well. That's why you see some old Gorilla Tape that's still on them from last time. And uh, so what I'm going to do is just continue to wrap the uh, insulation around it and uh, use the Gorilla Tape to help me out there. Uh, just a, a word of caution when you're, when you're doing this, uh, make sure that you think through how wind could tear it off. So you may want to wrap a lot of Gorilla Tape around it if you think it's really going to be uh, detrimental. Uh, so from the back side here, same thing, just getting the pieces to kind of uh, overlap a little bit if they can use a Gorilla Tape to hold everything in position. Um, again, uh, I'll, I'll talk more about whether or not wrapping is all that essential or whether it's that uh, advantageous. It depends largely on your conditions, where you live and all. But I'll, uh, after we're done with me wrapping this hive up, I'll go into more details and we'll, we'll kind of talk about whether or not this is an effective way of helping your hive make it through the winter or not. And so one thing I want to show you is when we, once we put the winter bee kind on, I like to pull it down a little bit because the winter bee kind has a groove in it. And that little notch is for ventilation. And it does allow the bees to fly in and out uh, during the winter time. So they're no longer able to use the bottom entrance since the um, insulation will cover that up. And you can see the notch there. And so I'll be able to... Uh, tape down my insulation and that way it won't block that hole if it shifts or something the bees can still go in and out okay back inside where it's warm and we'll talk about wrapping a hive should you or shouldn't you wrap a hive 
Well, it's a frequently asked question about getting your bees through the winter. Should you wrap them? Should you not wrap them? And the first thing we need to do is clarify and speak directly about honeybees and how they overwinter. A lot of people think bees overwinter in the same way that we as humans do. We go into a nice insulated house, we turn the thermostat up to 70 degrees, 72 degrees, and we stay nice and cozy all winter until spring. Yeah, bees don't do that. Nor do bees hibernate. Bees aren't like bears. They don't eat a bunch of food and then go to sleep. Bees don't do that either. So how do bees warm their hive or stay warm if they don't do it the way humans do it? Well, bees actually cluster. There'll be about 40 plus thousand bees in a colony that overwinters. And those bees will get really close to each other and they will produce heat by vibrating their muscle in the thorax that operates their wings and their legs. So by exercising that muscle, kind of like doing this, it makes heat. And that all those bees doing that at the same time can generate a lot of heat. It's not unusual for bees to keep the area around some brood. You know, they have a small amount of brood during the winter time. And it's not unusual for that to be 90 plus degrees around the brood area. Now on the outside of the cluster, and especially maybe up above in a honey super where no, no bees are up there, it may get up much colder. It could even freeze. I've opened up hives in the winter uh, where the bees are down lower in a cluster and that upper um, frames of honey up there at the top will actually be frozen. So bees only heat in close proximity of each other. They're only making heat so each bee can be warm. In fact, the bees on the outer edge of the cluster can even become so cold they can't move, that's inside their hive, that their sisters have to pull them deeper into the cluster to warm them back up. So given that bees don't actually heat the inside of their hive, is it worthwhile wrapping a hive? Um, now, when you wrap a hive up, you can use a lot of different materials. When I was first starting out in beekeeping, all the old timers back in the early, in the early 1990s, uh, they were telling me that I should wrap up my hives in the winter with some black roofing paper. Now, that worked really good. I, I think it does. I mean, I don't do that much anymore occasionally just to experiment a little bit. But I think black roofing paper is a good alternative. What it does is it kind of makes the whole edge, the outside edge of the hive black, and that absorbs more of the sunlight from the southern uh, sun in the wintertime. So it can really kind of warm the hive up a little more by absorbing the sunlight in that black, darker fabric. But more importantly, I think black roofing paper, I think its number one feature is that it's a wind block. You know, if you have some cracks or if your hive is um, sort of um, maybe has some edges broken off or something is not tight on it, that roofing paper can actually be a wind block preventing wind from blowing strong against that hive and, and it can just help in that way. There are other types of wrap you can use. You saw me use bat insulation, the kind that you put in between walls. I've done that for years, and a lot of people think it's gonna get so wet and it's gonna fall down, and, but it doesn't. It really dries out quickly, being glass insulation, and it works really well for me. Um, other people try to use more uh, commercialized wraps that people sell for beehives that are plastic bags full of insulation. And some people use harder foam board. One thing I want to say is I don't get too excited about the R value of me wrapping a hive because I'm really kind of more interested in maybe just blocking the wind a little bit and not so much creating like I do at my home, a big R value uh, trying to keep the cold out. Again, bees don't heat the inside of their hives like we do our homes. Now, a negative side of insulation is that on a warmer winter day, it works in the opposite way that we want it to. For example, 
In a few days, it will be about 45 degrees here uh, where my bees are. And it won't be very windy, it's gonna be sunny, and my bees are gonna fly. And that's not a problem that they're flying. The insulation, being insulated or not, bees are flying, that doesn't matter. What does matter? My insulation will actually work in reverse. Instead of doing what I wanted to do to keep cold wind and cold air out in the, and allow the colony to be warm, now I've got a warm southern uh, sun hitting the box that if the insulation wasn't on it, my box, the hive, would really warm up. It would warm up the outside of the hive. That heat would penetrate and help the bees move around more inside the hive and maybe getting some food off of frames here and there that they couldn't do if they were in a tight cluster. So that's a problem with wrapping a hive where temperatures fluctuate from being very cold to warming up to where the bees are moving around more. You'll want the sunlight to be able to warm that hive up and with a wrap around it, it could prevent that. So I've had my best luck actually monitoring my wrap going out there on warmer days above 35 or 40 if it's sunny and not very windy, taking it off, letting the sun warm up the outside of the hive. But when it gets to single digits or below, yeah, it's probably a good idea for me to go out there, wrap it back up, because I live out on the prairie where it can be 20 below zero wind chill factor. And that is hard on bees. Hey, speaking about wind, I think wrapping a hive really has more of a windbreak um, positivity to it than actually helping the hive stay warm. For example, here in Illinois, my house, if it's really windy outside and maybe only 30 degrees, my house can really, my furnace can run a lot more. <laughs> it gets colder. The wind just kind of, even though I'm insulated and it's a pretty tight house, the wind has a way of just chilling the house more. But it can be 20 degrees, sunny and not windy, and yet my furnace doesn't run as much. Same with the beehive. If the wind's pounding against it all the time, I think it can make the bees much cooler, much colder. So a windbreak might be something that you should consider. People ask me about windbreaks. They say, should I build a fence around it? Should I put some bales of straw or hay around it? Well, that's not a bad idea in the winter time. Some of you are thinking about keeping bees in 2021, and already you're thinking about the location. You should give some thought now to where you want to put your hives so that in the winter, there'll be a little bit of wind block. Now for me, most of my cold wind comes out of the north, northwest, and I like to keep my bees on the south side of my buildings. That gives them a wind block, and by far they do a lot better with that a building catching some of the sun out of the south and the wind block blocking that cold northern wind. So plan ahead when you're thinking about where to put your bees. Um, think about where are they going to be more sheltered during the harshness of winter. So wind block is probably going to do a lot more for your hive than wrapping them. Now another question I have about wrapping has to do with the bottom board. A lot of beekeepers use screen bottom boards. I do, I like screen bottom boards. I leave my screen bottom boards open all winter. I need ventilation. I have a combination of ventilation in my hives, a screen bottom board that I leave open all winter, and then I have my winter bee kind on the top where we have a little hole, a little opening for ventilation to passively escape out of the top of the hive. Now the winter bee kind itself absorbs a lot of moisture. And that's what we're trying to get rid of during the winter time. And that moisture is absorbed in the candy, making it much more pliable for the bees to consume. So as you can see in the video of me wrapping my hive, I like to wrap it all the way down where I close off my bottom entrance with the wrapping. And um, my hives are about a foot off the ground. I leave a few inches just above the ground where my wrap, wrapping paper doesn't go all the way to the ground. So that allows some passive ventilation to get rid of the moisture around the hive. I don't want to bring my insulation all the way to the ground, all the way around the hive. It's going to trap a lot of ground moisture 
underneath my hive and not let the wind, you know, evaporate it away on a drier day. So that's one of my techniques. Um, as far as keeping the bottom board open, I know a lot of people feel better closing it because they're thinking again, like humans, that we need to close off our house and tighten it up for winter, but bees do need ventilation. If you want to, you could slide a little bit of covering on that bottom board, but I wouldn't cover the entire bottom board. I would want a little bit of ventilation around that bottom board uh, to help keep the hive dry in the winter time. They need to be dry. Bees do use some moisture around the brood area during the winter, but by far they create a lot of condensation um, that uh, just the bees activity and the difference between the hot and the cold air outside the hive and in the hive makes a lot of condensation that sometimes bees have a hard time getting rid of. So I guess weighing all the odds, a lot of it depends on where you live. If you live in a, in a northern state, a northern climate where it's never gonna get above freezing for maybe uh, six months, three months at a time, you're gonna be way down there and, and below zero, wrapping probably is for you. But if you live like where I live, where you can have some very cold weather, but it might warm up above freezing again off and on, wrapping doesn't really matter that much, as I have found out. It seems to me that if you have a very strong colony, 40,000 bees or more, and their varroa mite count is pretty low during the fall when you checked it, they don't have a lot of viruses, and you have some good food on there like the winter bee kinds, those bees are gonna do just fine. Truth be told, bees aren't really dying from cold unless they're very low in population. A lot of people lose the queen's productivity or their queen altogether in the fall. They don't have 40,000 bees in the winter and the bees die because they're too small to stay warm. Or the bees are large, but the beekeeper failed to really stay on top of the varroa destructor mite and those mites have spread a lot, of, a lot of viruses that now are causing the bees to become sick and perish. So wrapping and feeding is, it doesn't guarantee your bees are gonna make it. There's other pathogens out there like nosema. Um, there's just a lot of things facing bees today that can still cause them to succumb to their death during the winter time. But we have to do what we can. And I'm glad you're thinking about wrapping, feeding your bees, making a wind block, doing what you can. Well, as you can see, there's a lot to getting your bees through the winter. I have a complete online beekeeping course entitled Getting Your Bees Through the Winter. I'll leave a link to it in the description below where we go into a lot more detail about should I put my bees in a greenhouse, in a barn, and should I put heating blankets on it? Should I put a heating lamp on my beehive? A lot of questions like that are answered in that class. We go into a lot more detail and specifics about getting your bees through the winter. So be sure and check this class out. It's not too late for you to apply a lot of the principles that I teach in this class on how to get your bees through the winter. You can take it from the safety of your home. All of our online courses uh, are great during this time of the pandemic uh, when most of the classes have been canceled, public classes. You know, you don't want to be uh, too unsafe and gathering in rooms full of people to learn about bees. Uh, you want to play it safe and take one of our online courses. So there you go. I hope that's been helpful for all of you. Thanks so much for watching. It's uh, always a joy to teach you more about bees. Please subscribe to the beekeeping channel here. I love helping you and I love the feedback that you're giving me. And one final thing I wanna say is that my grandchildren of, of various ages, I have uh, uh, 12 grandchildren and they love to watch my, uh, these videos. Where? Um, right there. <laughs> uh, my uh, sons and daughters will send me videos of my grandchildren watching watching me on their TV. It's it's a hoot. So hello everybody. <laughs> That's great. So if your children are enjoying these videos, or your grandchildren, or you are, uh, let me know. Leave a thumbs up. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.